I am not one to disappoint. And even though I'm not at home, when someone asks me a question, I like to give you the actual facts. So I got asked this question on response to one of my videos. It's great knowing the what, but can you show us the how? I am all about breaking it down and making sure it's super accessible. So I'm gonna show you how by giving you two core examples and then taking you through a step-by-step -step of how I would do it for a fictional brand. So this is an example of how we take that how to build that marketing messaging and put it into practice. I'm Gina, I'm a marketing director from South London and I have spent 15 years working in startups, scale-ups and big brands and I'm here to show you that marketing doesn't need a big budget, it doesn't need a big workforce, it just needs some core foundational skills. So as a quick refresher, I did a video on how to build your marketing messaging. If you haven't watched it, go back and watch it because it is a great one, but I got this comment asking for a bit more. So I thought that I would make this video that takes you through a bit of a case study from a well-known brand and then I will show you how I would do it for a fictional brand so you have some practical application. What you do to get your marketing messaging is you take your USP or the service you offer and you think about sitting down for a dinner with your friends and they ask you what do you do and you think about how you would answer that. Very quick, off the cuff, often emotionally led. From that quick response to what you do, you then need to go and find supporting points of proof. Now these supporting points of proof are so that you can understand what you actually need to put in your message because it can't just be top line of what do you do? I provide social media services. Your USP needs to be something different and thinking about getting supporting points of proof will help you really solidify what that message should be based on facts. Once you've got your supporting points of proof, you then want to reframe that in a way that your audience speaks. If you are a young brand and you have got very data-led points of proof, regurgitating that in very tech speak is not gonna get to your audience if you're trying to drive a Gen Z audience. So this final step is to make sure that your messaging will get cut through. It is really that simple. You take what you do, you get yourself a couple of supporting proof points to know that you're really, really solid in what you offer, and then you reframe that and talk to people in the way that they talk. But let's go through a couple of case studies and then an example to show you how that is technically and physically put into practice. Now, the first one I'm going to do because I love this brand is Airbnb. Imagine you're sitting around a dinner with Brian Chesky and someone says, what do you do? And he goes, we allow people to host people. Simple. That's it. And then he goes away and thinks, I'll do Gina's course and I'll find out how to do my marketing messaging. The next thing he's going to ask himself is what supporting proof does he have? Well, the supporting proof is that it's in the power of the hosts. Supporting proof is that anybody who has a space can register it on his online platform and therefore be able to host people. It's giving them the opportunity to open their doors for others to stay. The other piece of supporting proof is that he has a product where people can book that space and then they are able to be that traveler. So his main thing is that it's all around the hosts. Their USP is that these holidays are made possible and special by the fact that they are done by local people living in the area, hosting people into their own space. It's not a chain. It's not a very sterile experience. It's made possible because people are willing to open their homes. From this supporting data, we come to the marketing message of made possible by hosts. It has taken their core USP, different from being booking into a hotel. It has done the supporting proof that it is actually the host that's doing a lot of the work and it has translated that into how their audience speaks. They care about local community, they care about local experiences, so made possible by hosts is in their tone of voice. Another example that will help us get this marketing message is Patagonia, another brand that I love. Their USP is they have very sustainable practices not just the material, but the business as a whole. Their supporting proof is that their products are more environmentally conscious and made for longer to benefit the user and to benefit the environment. Now that's quite a lot, and their target audience is adventurous, care about the world, care about sustainability. So when you translate that into their tone of voice, you get the marketing message of buy less, demand more. They are tapping into the tone of voice and the care from their audience that they want to be more conscious about what they're buying, but they don't want to reduce on the quality. So they've taken their, what do you do? Well, I make clothes that are better for the environment. They've used their points of proof that they're environmentally conscious in not only their materials, but also their practices. And then they've reframed that in the tone of voice of their consumers who are very brand aware and demand more from where they're buying their clothes. And now let's go step by step through a scenario where we are building the brand from scratch so you can see how this is done in real time. 
So imagine that I own an athleisure wear brand and my USP as it is made from material to fit anyone. It is inclusive in its size range and it is inclusive in your ability to wear it anywhere. Working out is not just going to the gym, it's sometimes going for a walk, going on errands. So the whole point of my brand is the USP is it is inclusive. If I was around the dinner table with someone and they asked me what I did, I'd say that I made clothes that anybody can wear at any time. And that's my USP and my core message. My data to prove that is it is made from a special material that stretches more than normal material, but retains its comfort and its style. Also that it can be worn by anybody at any size to any event. Now that USP and those points of proof are not really in my audience's tone of voice. My core audience is people outside of the normal core audience of a pleasure wear. People who feel a little bit left out of everything that's going across social in terms of the lithe leggings and the after workout workwear. Their tone of voice is very straight to the point, no anachronisms, no buzzwords. So my marketing message is fit for anybody. Now, hopefully by looking at these two case studies and going through this breaking down a fictional brand, you understand how we take that method of understanding your USP, giving yourself those social points of proof, those data points of proof, and then just reframing it into your tone of voice to help you get your marketing message. And remember, you can do this for every product that you launch, for every new service you provide. Just keep going back to this core formula. How are you actually taking your unique selling point, making sure that it is unique and you've got the data to form the messaging, and then rewriting it in your audience's tone of voice? I hope that helped. If you want to drop any comments in any videos and you want me to explain something further, I am not here to gatekeep. I'm here to help you get better at marketing. So please do like, subscribe and follow along.